This conference will now be recorded. Five years. So let's look at today. I will explain, explain you the sound lessons three. Right, sound lessons three. Okay. Let me share my screen. My computer screen. Yes. So now I will explain you range of hearing. Range of hearing. Right? Range of hearing. Yes. Human can hear sound frequencies in the range uh, between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So we can hear between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Age and uh, damage reduces the upper limit. For example, an old person or someone exposed to prolonged high sound volume by volume may no longer be able to hear about 10,000 hertz. 10,000 hertz. Okay. Next, some animals can hear much higher frequencies. Bats and dolphins up to 100,000 hertz. And dogs between 40,000 to 60,000 hertz depends on the breed. So, see, normal normal human can hear between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Yes, so we cannot hear above 20,000 hertz and below 20 hertz. When it is above 20,000 hertz, it's called ultra ultrasound. Ultrasound. When it is below 20 hertz, it's called infrasound okay and uh, but bats and dolphins they can hear up to 100,000 hertz and dots so it means that bats and dolphins can hear ultrasound and dogs can hear can hear uh, infra between 40,000 60,000 also ultrasound it's also ultrasound okay Elephants, elephants can hear infrasound. Next, next, ultrasound and infrasound. So ultrasound is ultrasound is high frequency sound above twenty thousand hertz, too high to be heard by humans. Ultrasound echoes can be used to measure distance and to see inside objects. See, look at this animation. Infrasound is low frequency sound, inaudible to human, although we may feel the very slow vibrations. That's the difference between ultrasound and infrasound. Earthquake, earthquake wave are a form of infrasound. Okay. Elephants and some other large animals can hear infrasound. Elephants, they can hear infrasound. Okay. So now I will share, I will turn on camera and have a look, please. Let me write main parts on the board and copy these parts on your notebook. Okay, so we told that normal human can hear between 20 hertz till 20,000 hertz. Or instead of 20,000, we can write 20 kilohertz. 
they have same meaning 20,000 or 20 kilohertz okay then we we told that when it is above 20,000 hertz when it's above 20,000 hertz it's called ultrasound see so above 20,000 hertz it is ultrasound okay higher than 20,000 hertz okay and below 20 hertz it's called infrasound infrasound it is below 20 hertz okay so we cannot we cannot hear ultrasound and infrasound for example but elephants they can hear infrasound but dolphins can hear the dolphins and dogs we told that they can hear ultrasound okay additionally upper limit of hearing it decreases by two kilohertz every decade of our age so it decreases by two kilohertz two kilohertz so write this sentence upper limit of hearing decreases two kilohertz every decade of our age decade of our age every decade of our age means that after every 10 years after every 10 years upper limit of hearing decreases by two kilohertz for that reason uh, hearing of young people is stronger than hearing of old people because there is a difference between young and old people let's continue copy it copy these uh, sentences and copy everything on the board on your notebook pause video and first copy it and laser this continue can you see board you are you are lucky because i cannot write you negative comment you are lucky so let's continue Mm -hmm. So I explained you ultrasound and infrasound. Ultrasound and infrasound. Next part, sound waves in different materials. So sound travels quick through solids. A train can often be heard approaching through the rails before it can be heard through the air. Sound travels well through liquids. Whales can communicate over great distance underwater. Sound travels slow through gases. The speed of sound increases with temperature. Its main sentence is speed of sound increases with temperature. Sound doesn't travel through a vacuum. Why? Because there is no particle. Okay, for that reason, sound cannot travel through vacuum. Sound doesn't travel in space because approximately in space there is no particle. Therefore, we are taking that taking uh, like this. Sound cannot travel in in space. Okay, so speed of sound, speed of sound examples. See, speed of sound, substance and temperatures. It's maximum. On air, at zero degrees Celsius, it's 330 meter per second. But at 20 degrees Celsius, it is 342 meter per second. Negative 10 degrees Celsius, it is 
325 C when temperature uh, increases, speed of sound also increases. But when temperature decreases, speed of sound also decreases. Yes. And fresh water at 25 degrees Celsius, 1497. Sea water at 25 degrees Celsius, 1560. Still at 20 degrees Celsius, 5000. Vacuum, zero. So you, uh, if you look at air and water, you see that speed of sound in air is less than speed of sound in water. Okay, so speed of sound, speed of sound is maximum in solids. Okay, laser in liquids, laser in gases. So it's maximum in solids and minimum in gases. Okay, minimum in gases. So let, let me write this sentence on the board and copy it on your notebook. Okay, so yes. Right, speed of sound. Erase this one. Speed of sound. Speed of sound is maximum. in solids minimum in gases this main sentence so uh, speed of sound is maximum in solids minimum in gases okay and in uh, liquid it's between them first solids later liquids and later gases okay copy this sentence also we told that uh, speed of sound right speed of sound speed of sound depends on depends on temperature depends on temperature And if temperature increases, if temperature increases, speed of sound, speed of sound also Okay, so speed of sound is directly proportional with temperature. If temperature increases, speed of sound, speed of sound also increases. Okay, so they are directly proportional. Speed of sound is directly proportional with temperature. Okay, so copy the sentences on your notebook. And this continue. So okay. And build your experiment. Look at this experiment. This experiment shows that sound needs a material medium for transmission. Okay, so as the air pressure inside the bell jar is reduced, the loudness of the sound heard outside decreases. Okay, and next, the bell can be still seen to seem to be working normally. Okay. So uh, first, there are air particles inside of container. And first, air removed using a vacuum pump 
and its bell jar and bell works but cannot be heard because when if we remove all particles okay if we remove all particles so bell bell can uh, we cannot hear bell it's working but we cannot hear bell because there is no particle when there is no particle sound cannot spread okay cannot spread okay that's the end of uh, third lesson uh, see you on the fourth lesson